Coming to you live from downtown Detroit, this is Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep with your host, Joel Conan. This is a volatile puppy here, isn't it? And Dennis Dick. I've been the penny. I will buy the stock for a penny. With everything you need to start your trading day. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to this Monday edition of Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep. Spencer Israel, Joel Elkanen, Dennis Stake. Well, uh, I thought we'd be talking about Woodstock for Capitalists on the show this morning and uh, comments that came out of uh, Omaha from Trump, um, not Trump, from uh, Warren and uh, Uncle Carl over the weekend. But instead, we got this tweet last night from the president and the trade war is reignited and that is going to lead our show today. So we're going to talk about the ramifications of this tweet, how the market's reacting, what what is justified, what's not justified. We'll kind of work through all as many trades as we can related to the uh, the trade war. And our guest today, Christian Fromhertz from Tribeca Trade Group, he would join us at 8.35. Well, let's jump right into it, Joel. What's happening this morning? Oh, we are red and we are deeply red. Uh, interesting, though, uh, the high still falls in within the range from Friday. And as Dennis pointed out, we're still right at Thursday's low. So what you know what really is going on in the market here is what we're going to try and figure out today uh pre-market high 29.1775 that's a good target that's right near yesterday's low and uh, also the close from thursday pre-market low 8350 uh that's just under your april 11th low at 85 and a quarter we'll keep an eye on that and uh decision time right here at mid-range on the session 2901 so we've got Half of those losses back. We hold that. Boom. Go back. And uh, don't think we'll go green today, though. Uh, crude taking a big hit as well. They had this thing done uh, well over a buck fifty. Got to that psychological sixty dollar level. Sixty point oh four is the low. Chip back up at sixty one sixty seven. Well, let's see if that can go green. That's right near sixty one ninety four. Gold. Uh, gold's not worried about anything. Up 50 cents here, 12.81 and a half, up uh, just barely. Silver down 12 cents and Bitcoin down 52.50. But as I look at the screen, I see a lot of red here, but it, yeah. are stocks as down as much as they should? Mm, stocks are down more than they should be, in my That's opinion. Idea, yeah. They've been coming back, though. Four o'clock got silly. I mean, I was up at four in the morning and the stocks just got way overdone. You had, and, and I don't know if you want to bring up some charts of some of these things, but there's no liquidity at four in the morning. So whoever's waking up to sell stuff down five, six percent at four in the morning is way overdone. I mean, the S&P futures are down one and a half. So you got a stock up with a beta of two. It should be down three. You're looking at a lot of stocks down three, four percent here today. Maybe some of the trade war stocks like Caterpillar, you know, are going to be ground zero kind of. So maybe that's deserved. But, you know, you're also seeing stocks like Walmart trade down one percent. I mean, should Walmart be down one percent because we got a trade war going? I don't know. You can look at, you know, components of the XLP. A lot of them were trading down more than one percent here this morning. They're on the comeback trail. I'll just say everything is already somewhat on the comeback trail. I know the S&P futures haven't rallied much from the lows. But the stocks have. There was some overnight sellers here, and they're already starting to come off the low. So you're already seeing some of the buy the dip. Uh, it's, it's hard to really say that this is going to be like, okay, throw in the towel. This is the start of something big. I, I don't see that here, at least not yet from a tweet. I think Trump's playing tough guy here a little bit. Give us the overnight tweet so we can analyze it just from, you know, just from that perspective. And then we'll go a little bit deeper into the stocks. What was the overnight tweet? All right. For, you want me to read it to you? Uh, yeah, read, okay. it to for, read it to everybody. For 10 months. Somebody doesn't have Twitter. For 10, that's, <laughs> I guess that's a fair point. For 10 months, China has been paying tariffs to the USA of 25% on $50 billion of high tech and 10% on $20 billion of other goods. These payments are partially responsible for our great economic results. The 10% will go up to 25% on Friday. $325 billion of additional goods sent to us by China remain untaxed, but we will be shortly at a but will be shortly at a rate of 25%. The tariffs paid to the USA have had a little impact on our product costs, mostly borne by China. The trade deal with China continues, but too slowly as they attempt to renegotiate. No. And that is it. That was, that was a tweet. That was two tweets. I was going to say, that's a pretty long tweet. I liked it better when we had 144 characters. It was getting a little bit like a novel there. It's falling asleep halfway through that tweet. Anyways, so bottom line is trade wars back on. Apparently. So that's all you need to know. Trade wars back on, at least for now. 
And that's why the market is spooked. That's why you're going to see stocks like Caterpillar, some of the bigger, you know, 3Ms down significantly. Boeing's getting hit. Some of the big industrials getting hit. You can see a lot of your tech get hit, but you're also seeing everything get hit here this morning. That's what I'm challenging is the sell everything trade that we're seeing this morning. I don't know if this is a sell everything type of headline here. I think you're going to see some rotation. I actually think you're going to see some of these stocks come back. We actually saw some of the dogs barking last week. So some of the stocks like General Electric were starting to show life again. And it wasn't only GE. There was a lot. I had a whole bunch of them that I was going to come in the show and talk about the dogs barking. Uh, but now you get this headline, it's a completely different story. But you're pe seeing people look for money, look for value, look for something that hasn't run yet uh, because everything is going up. Now it's like all of a sudden, you know, portfolio manager, you've been underinvested. It's probably a lot of people licking their chops here this morning saying, oh, okay, Apple's been, you know, looking on fire here. Now I can get Apple, you know, only down six points here this morning. I, I think you're going to see some buy the dipping coming in again. And so they've already paid all that money that they're supposed to pay, and it's already been filtered through the economy. So that's basically what he said in that tweet. Things just happen like that. They're automatically paying the extra tariffs, and the money's flow down into the economy. Uh, I don't know about that. Uh, let's see. We also we, – we don't know, like – we don't know the context of this tweet. Like, we don't know why he sent this. We don't know what's really going on behind the scenes. It, it, uh, I think what's going on behind, I will speculate what's going on behind sure, the scenes. The markets are at all time highs. Right. Yeah, I can play tough guy again. So when the markets in December were in crumbles, you know, that's where he started to get soft on China talks. And we keep thinking, you know, for the last couple of months, we're going to have a deal because obviously, you know, we, we weren't talking as tough as we were. S&Ps are back at all time highs. Lots right. of bullets in the chamber here now. Right. Let's talk tough again. I'm going to play tough because I don't mind the market falling two, three, four percent from these all time highs. Market's up 30 percent this year. So let's play tough guy. I think that's what it is. So I think he's going to play a little bit tougher here now because he can. The markets are on highs and he's not, um, you know, he's not as doesn't look as bad on his administration. If we fall three, four percent back in December when we we're down 20 percent already, nobody could stomach another three, four, five percent fall. And the market didn't want to hear that. So I think it's just tough guy talk here. I think eventually we still are going to get a deal. I think they're going to probably, you know, could, could this come for a couple of days? Can we get a dip? I don't think the S&Ps are going green or anything today, but I don't think it's going to be a sell everything. I think you're going to have some stocks that are on the cheap this morning. I think it's going to be an opportunity. That's what I'm saying. You know, you know maybe I stay away from Caterpillar, but maybe you're jumping, you know, like at Disney even. You know, we've talked about Disney for a long time. It's quietly even starting to pull back here. I never thought I was going to get a shot at 130 again. Maybe I'm going to. So maybe this is the time to have your little list out there. And if you got some stocks that aren't trade war stocks, maybe just look at this as an opportunity to scoop them up. Um, also, it, even when we have big down days or whatever, or some rotation, some negative, it's never a sell everything market. There's always rotation. And also, you know, we're talking. Unless you're in December. Yeah, well, last year in December. That, that's, yeah, we yeah. were seeing a sell everything market. And we've talked about this on the show too. Like a good point, Joel. Like we have not seen really a sell everything market for years. We were seeing it in December for the first time where they were selling, you know, we were looking at the S&P and 450 of the 500 stocks are down. That's a sell everything market to the, you know, for the most part. But, you know, going back to the financial crisis, I can remember some days and tweeting out 492 out of 500 stocks down today. That's a sell everything market. You're not. You're right. You're going to see rotation here today. And right now in the pre-market, it's kind of been a sell everything pre-market. And that's what I'm challenging is I don't think this is going to be a sell everything day here today. I think some of your stocks that are trading down, you know, like some of these defensive XLP components that are trading 1% down here this morning, I think they're going to, um, you know, some of those could potentially even go green. Well, Dennis, my, my question is you mentioned cash on the sidelines. This is not the first buying. This is not the first dip we've had. In, no. in in the year for this year, so what, like, what makes you think the cash that was on the sidelines didn't come back in in early March when we when we, had a, we had a few? It's come days. back in every single time, right? Okay, so every single dip has been bought on the S and P. So why is this one different? Is what I'm challenging. Every time we pull back two three percent, we've got people buying. All of a sudden, you get a one and a half percent pullback here overnight. So maybe you're going to be early. Maybe it's going to go down another one percent or two percent. But is it really? You know, when you put it in perspective. We're down, yeah. We're down 450 Dow points. It sounds awful. From you know, the media can make it sound really awful. We're back to Thursday's low. We're back to the low we we're, were two above days ago. <laughs> yeah, and two also, days ago. I mean, this is not like a holy cow, your portfolio is destroyed. 
No, it's back to where it was two days ago. We were so talking. Yeah. I think there's a lot of money on the sideline that still needs to come in. I, 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 I'm still sitting with my long for a portfolio cash on the sidelines. I'm looking at my chops, looking at Disney right now and thinking, I said on the show last week that I think this could be a $200 stock. I still believe that. If they're going to price their, their new streaming services like they give Netflix those premiums, and we know the parks and everything else, you were there, Spencer. They're still packed. I mean, yes, they have some problems with the ESPN, yes, some cord cutting, but they're fixing those problems. They're obviously doing it by looking at different services. I mean, if they give any type of a premium to the Disney service that they do to the Netflix, I mean, Disney's exp- uh, multiple could expand quite a bit here. 143, talking about it five days ago. 132, it's 11 points down. Maybe this is a chance on a stock like that. Yeah, I told Joel. Uh, I told Joel I was buying Disney last week. I never actually got around to it. I said that a lot. I said that a lot, but no. But for real, well, though, we should buy it together, Spencer. Maybe okay, no, no, that's what I'm saying. Hey, Jeremy Newsom, I tweeted with him too, and we both said if this gets back to 130, take a shot. Or you know what? That shot might come this morning. We're 132, so. No, no, I but, don't know. And, and when I say I'm buying, I'm like I'm buying for like I'm not gonna. This is exactly. This is, I, I, yes. this is a 20 year position for me. Yeah, position, and that's so. what it is. You gotta separate you go. it. You right. guys, you guys are getting. Let me hop in for a second. Okay. 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 This is a I, I, are you? Uh, let's say you mad, manage like billions of dollars, all right? And you've been in this market, and you have the responsibility of investing in stocks over the long haul. And you make these trading decisions, whether you're quantitative, fun, whatever you are, all right. Are you going to wake up one morning and see on one Trump tweet with the booze down one and a half percent, down 47, and say, oh, I'm wrong. You know, I, I got all my long term data, all my position trading, everything I've been doing for X amount of years to get this return. It's out the window now because of one Trump tweet. It, it just it doesn't happen that way. Yeah, maybe this is a turn in the market. Maybe we're going down. Yeah, I mean, you hardly could say this is the start of a bear market and one down day, but there's going to be rebounds here. There's going to be retracements. There's going to be a lot of things going on. So the big, big money, I mean, we're talking all oh, the action here. And Dennis, you're talking about you're mm-hmm. really drilling down to the minutia here. But do you think long term investment managers, I think long term money is looking at this and saying, wow, what a gift here. You know, I think so. I yeah. think they're going to want to get in. Yep. And it may be. Uh, I think they're looking at a market and saying, that this has been straight up here. I got another option. I think they've said that every single time. I think they said it in March when we pulled back from S and P's 280 down to 273. They bought them. I mean, every three four percent pullback has been bought. So could this go on for another couple percent? But I don't think we're going back to December where we're in trouble all of a sudden. There's trade deals, there's all kinds of problems. There's too much money that's that got caught being bearish, me myself included. And that wants to keep coming back in. So you've just got underneath demand all over the place and so many different stocks. So I, I, I can't get bearish here. I'm not getting bearish on this tweet. And, you know, yes, it could continue for a day. Maybe as a day trader, you got to be a little bit cautious. But as a long-term investor, I look at something like a Disney and you're saying your time horizon 20 years, Spencer. How do you go wrong with Disney 20 years out? I, I, don't, I don't think you can. Okay. I think you're right. I think it's a good one. Okay, can we though talk about Chinese stocks right now? Because those are the yeah. ones. Those are the ones that actually ground zero. Right, that's ground zero, and they are getting hit, and probably deserve what they sell this morning. Every stock you can think of is down. Alibaba, even like the IPOs, up, up fintech, yeah. Tiger. I'm looking at go down my list here. Weibo, they're all everyone. Oh, read that. Read about the plunge, plunge protection team oh, in yeah. China. Right, this is interesting. So um, China has a, a reportedly called on their team of state investors to prepare to stabilize the stock market if needed should the Shanghai Composite uh, fall and it's, it fell overnight or yesterday in the overnight session it fell 5%. So uh, they are all sitting tight with their fingers on the trigger getting ready to buy this market in China should they you know, feel the need <laughs> to protect the plunge. I mean, put it in perspective there too. Just bring up the FXI or the EEM. These have had pretty darn good years as well. EEM started the year at 38 bucks. It's 44, so it's down a buck here this morning, 42.94. We're still probably up 25, 26%. So I, I, you're, you're torn, you know, because it has been a good year. So you could the pullback could get more significant here. But I just don't think this is all, you know, this is the start of a, you know, a big bear market here or, or major concerns. We need a plunge protection team to come in and protect ourselves here. What plunge? Because we went down at 3% overnight? Come on. No, no, 5% in the Shanghai Composite. 
Okay, well, that's a good pop fall. It's a good overnight fall. But I'm not seeing that on the EEM. The EEM's not down 5%. Now it's down 2.87. The FXI is down 3.7. Those are all full of China stocks. So even though if the Shanghai's five, whatever, we've already started buying them back then yeah, over here. That's because they're getting ball right now as we as we speak. That's why. They're, they're getting, they're, they, they've bought, they've already, like, if you're looking, reading the tea leaves in the pre-market, it's not only that the S&Ps, you know, are starting to rally a little bit. The stocks have rallied significantly from their from their lows. Like, you start bringing up these charts, buy the dip started four hours ago. So it's not like we're just, you know, I think they're going to be coming in and starting to buy the dip. I'm just reading what they're doing. They're already buying the dip. So are they going to continue to do it? Are we going flat and green today? I don't think we're going green. And maybe the index is kind of hang out. Maybe we're going to be down 40. But there's going to be some rotation. And there's going to be some stocks that do go green. And there's going to be some buying opportunities if you're picking the right stocks. That's my opinion. And, it, you know, you also, I mean, trade wars are not good. You know, they can have, you know, impacts on companies' earnings. We can't, uh, we can't ignore that. But, you know, is, it, is this all right now? All on just one tweet is the deal out. And uh, Christian Framhurst is going to be uh, joining us at uh, just a few minutes here. And he's noting that China got hit harder than the U.S. It seems like the art of the deal here. And Dennis, that's what you said um, at the top of the show. Trade wars aren't good. Who knows if it's a negotiation tactic. Uh, but, you know, at least, you know, we got the numbers here. We got the levels. We're trading yeah. it. Through. If you look at it this way, if you wanted to buy, if you wish you would have bought at Thursday's low, which was last week's low at twenty nine oh one, yeah. here's your opportunity. Well, not mm -hmm. not anymore. Now we're above it. Now we're in. Yeah, yeah. The opportunity is very fast. <laughs> Mosca, great point here. That I was talking about the dogs barking, and thank you for bringing up Ford. It's another one that I had on my list. GE Easter was starting to look good last week. Ford was looking good. All of a sudden, you get a 28 cent pullback here, a nice little pullback here in Ford. I mean, if you're a real believer that Ford's starting to figure it out, what an opportunity here this morning. You just got the, the gap up there. You're getting a third of it back here overnight. I think people come in here and buy the Ford dip too. I agree with you, Mosca. That's just my opinion. General Motors obviously never had the big pop off its earnings. And for whatever reason, maybe expectations went up after Ford reported. So maybe it was a victim of reporting second in, in comparison to Ford. But I don't know, a GM a 5.92 or Ford's a 5.92% dividend, GM's 4% dividend. If you really believe that these guys are figuring it out and you figure, and if you're thinking that Tesla's, you know, in trouble, and a lot of people do believe that, I mean, if we're going to still have cars, somebody's got to make them, right? So even if they're going to be autonomous, somebody's got to make them. I mean, one of these, I think Ford and GM is going to win or Tesla's going to win. Somebody's going to win. But I, Ford and GM have been coming back. Ford's been coming back at least. So you get a pullback here this morning. I think funny managers coming to this too. And we talk a lot about, you know, don't chase, don't chase, don't chase, you know. Get that opportunity. <laughs> One tweet. We had a headline here, tweet overnight. And you know what? You're getting an opportunity. So I'm saying you long-term listeners out there, people who are trading their 401ks, people who are trading, you know, their, their, their other retirement accounts, and they're looking to add stocks, have your list ready. These are the opportunities that you strike on. Yep. Okay. All right, let's talk. Uh, do we want to run through some of these uh, some of these Chinese stocks, which are getting hit a little yeah. bit more? Yeah. But, uh, what mean, are some of the favorites? It's been a while. I mean, Alibaba is is is, okay. is, talk is, is always the favorite here. Okay. I mean, the stock's down eight bucks here this morning. The stock made new new highs on the move. It's a, been a, a really good year for Alibaba. I'm long it. We know I've talked about it before. One hundred twenty nine dollars started the year. Now it's one hundred ninety five. It's been a hell of a year. Going to pull back to one eighty one seventy. Probably the bull trend would still be intact. So even if you get a significant pullback of three, four, five percent more from where it already is down here this morning, it's still going to be in an uptrend. And I still think that there is going to be a deal eventually to be made here. So um, short term, it's looking like some pain here. But I think if you're sticking around, it's it's already off the pre-market lows here, too. Yeah. And uh, just to show you guys what we're talking about here at the four o'clock opening a little bit after that is when that washed out. It was around 445, 5 a.m. Uh, you did make a pre-market low at 183.65. So now you're four bucks above that. So if you didn't buy at 183.65, then you got to, you know, pick your poison here. Are you going to wait for that level to be tested or go and go through it? Or if you're short, Man, now, well, let me find the daily low here. And I'd say the, the closest daily low that comes out for me is 183.82. And that was your low on April 30th. So what's this? what we'll be keying on here is the pre-market lows 
whether or not you have a daily low or maybe two or three daily lows that coincide with it. And then also look at your high since the rebound, you know, since uh, it hit that low. Yeah. And it's right where it was. So these are the early numbers, 183.65. And then right now you're trading at the highs of the pre-market session, 187. 31. But if you just happen to pick up some 192 puts or 193 puts on Friday, you know, just for a little short term trade, what are you going to do? You're going to wait for wait for this thing to go back to 180. I I don't know. That, that's where you get another more more bright buying pressure be exerted on some of these stocks or short term option players. There's a lot of movement here today and a lot of individual stocks. And all I'm saying, I think you're, start, you're seeing a little bit of the baby thrown out with the bathwater here this morning. We're trying to find those babies. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> and the market's already coming back a little bit too. And I mean, that's a wild card. The market comes back. It's all coming back. But there's a lot of stocks that have been in favor and, you know, maybe not the China stocks because they've had a run and that is ground zero, like Spencer was saying. But some of these other plays, a lot of stocks that have you know been turned around. I think Ford's a good candidate. So we've given you a few names here. Let me keep give spitting you a, out in the chat. We'll keep giving them out as well. You know, if you think Baidu? you've got your eye on a good stock here, what do you got, Joel? Baidu. Well, Baidu. Well, that's China. Well, I don't well, okay, okay. So, so I'm saying that's ground zero. I'm not when when I okay. So this is a good conversation piece too. When I'm trading and stuff, I like to trade. You know, the inefficiencies here. I mean, that is ground zero. So this is like you know the stocks that are going to get hit the hardest. China's down 5% overnight. They're all going to be down. That's expected. That's probably, it's the stocks that, okay, and like this morning when Walmart was trading down 1.5%, I'm buying it because I'm like, is it really going to be down 1.5% when the market opens? It's more defensive. You know, stocks like CVS, pharmacy, stock was starting to turn it around a little bit. Dogs were barking a little bit. Um, you know, that stock was trained down over a buck this morning in the pre-market. Come on. I mean, it just seems a little bit overdone. So these are the kind of stocks that I look at, you know, as an opportunity. I'm not saying come in here and, you know, and, and buy them up to flat, but I'm saying I don't think that every single stock is going down one and a half percent today. No, it's not. The S&Ps are actually above mid-range on the session, down 44 handles at 03 and a quarter. I think I, I mentioned this at the top of the show. I mean, if you were like, you know how I, you know, I'm a little leery at gaps and everything. You don't even have a gap situation here because, I mean, if you're looking at the full session, uh, 16 and a half was the, the low on Friday and we opened up at 1775. So, I mean, yeah, we closed well, you know, way up at uh old time high at uh, 4750. But to me, man, I got a, you know, old support, new resistance. Uh, well, that will be the battleground today. I think for a weekly number, I'm going to look, looking a little bit higher up at uh, 2935, but Marcus doing, you know, doing trading technically well here so far. I don't, I mean, yeah, we're down and yeah, it was a lot of selling and people are scared and everything. But to me, I, I had to do a few more numbers. My lowest number uh, when I did them Sunday afternoon was 2901 because that was the low for last week. And uh, so I had to do the adjustment. And uh, I mean, if really get 2871, 75 was your April 4th low, we're 30 handles away from that. I don't see, I don't think we see it. And, and no, I, I think I, I don't need I don't think so either. And Ed Parker with a good point uh, that you know I don't, can't stress this enough. Your your Boeing's your Caterpillar is probably not going to go. Kind of ground zero too. Right. These are trade war stocks. Right. Those are ones I probably avoid. That's not. It's you know maybe the, if if they start buying the S and P's and we go flat today, they're going to buy all that stuff too. But the ones that I probably you know I'm not saying I come in here and short. I'm not doing that either. I mean every time Boeing's got down in the 360 area, it's been a buy. So maybe it is a buy because getting back down to that area too. But I mean. One time down there, two times down there. It's been down there like a dozen times. Eventually, if you bang your head, you know, bang against the floor long enough, you're going to break through it. So, I mean, that's that's an issue there too, just from a technical perspective. But I think I'm looking at, think about what's non-trade war. Think about, you know, there's a lot of stocks P that probably aren't affected really at all by this. Real quick, yet they're trading we, down. We PG. move away from Boeing. Uh, there was a headline on Boeing last night that they knew uh, this was at 5.55 p.m. that they knew about the 737 MAX safety alert problem a year before telling the FAA that's what that's some potential news out there. So but the thing, too, about about this Boeing, well, look what Tesla did, too. You know, you have all those lows. Everyone's leaning on all those lows. Oh, if we take those yeah. lows out, we're yeah, going to 200. Back. We're going to 200 for sure. Okay, what happens? You take out all those lows, everyone's waiting for 200, and then I don't really don't make what to make out of all. I mean, you know, he showed support in the company, 
and boom, you're back up. You're actually back in the trading zone. You are only out of that the trading uh, zone for one, two, three, four, five days at two-year range, and now yeah. you're back in it in Tesla. Yeah, and you look at all the negative headlines here, and obviously I've done a very poor job of trading this stock. So, you know, this is maybe not, I, like I said, I day trade it pretty good. As a swing trader or a long-term investor, I just, I'm, it's not my stock. I need to just put it on the do not put in your retirement account thing because, or a swing trading portfolio because I suck at swing trading the stock. Some stocks, you're just not good at it. I'm not good at this one. It's too choppy. It's shaking around. It's too headline oriented. There's just too much going on. So I'm done with the swing trading of Tesla. Uh, day trading, I will still day trade it though. But anyways, um, you look at it, look at the headlines that have come out. Like Spencer, go to the pro. Look about the headlines that have come out in this last month. You know, we've got disappointing, you know, sales from the company. The guidance was absolutely a mess. The, you know, you've still got, okay, well, Musk, you know, hasn't tweeted some bad stuff lately, but who knows? It's always a wild card there. They come out, they got to do an offering. They got to raise more capital. After Musk said, you know, six months ago, they probably wouldn't have to. They have to. So they raise more capital. After all that, after all those negative headlines, what are you off? Like 3%? I mean, this stock is just an unbelievable, resilient stock. Unbelievably resilient. So I, I can't imagine, you know, being short and, you know, and, and people are bragging about being short. What are they paying for those shorts too? I mean, some of these people have been holding this thing short for a year or two. There's fees involved with that. It's not just free money. Somebody's bragging, you know, that they shorted this thing at 340 and, you know, now it's 255. Good trade. But you held it, if you've held it for a year, you're paying some fees on top of that too. It's not free to short these things. I don't know. Tesla Bora is not like it used to be. It's a little cheaper than it used to be. But I mean, it's, it's hard to hold these things short for this long. And the headlines have been any other stock with all these negative headlines would be down 50%. Not this stock. It's resilient. What about a stock, uh, if I could bring it back to the trade war here, a stock like, like Procter Gamble, which I guess I had assumed could have a little bit more exposure to China just as far as where they where their products are made and stuff. But Dennis, you disagree with that? I think you're just, I think, I don't think the market's going to think like that. I okay. think the mar market's going to go, what can I, where can I play defense? Where can I rotate? I mean, if you're looking at the market and you look under the hood, and, you know, sometimes it's a good exercise, too, just to look under the hood and take the major components, even in the Dow. And you start looking at Boeing's trading down 3% and UTX trading down 2% two, two plus percent and Caterpillar trading down 3%, although they're all coming back. Um, and they were all down a lot more earlier. You think, well, there's got to be something that's going to pick up the slack. It's probably going to be Procter & Gamble. That's probably, you know, could it be down on the day? Yeah, it's down 0.64% now, but this morning it was down a lot more. Those are the opportunities when you're looking at this thing at four in the morning and it's trading down a lot more than it was. Like, I don't know, some, some of these didn't have any markets at all this morning, so they weren't trading down. But I think you're going to see rotation within the index. I think you're going to see some of, the, some, some of the more defensive, you know, quote unquote defensive stocks. We know in the long term, some of them aren't as defensive as they act like, but traders trade them like they're defensive. I think you're going to see some of that stuff hold up. I mean, even the pharma stocks, like they've been beat up as of late, at least some of them have. But think about Pfizer. Pfizer's only down half a percent now. It was down a lot more earlier. You're seeing, you know, Merck trade down only a little bit. So think about the XLV. That's down one and a half percent right now. I don't think the XLV opens down one and a half percent. I think it can hold on a little bit. You know, there is some of your UNH in there, which doesn't help, but that's on the comeback trail here too. So it's always good, you know, when you're just flat out selling an ETF, look what's happening with the individual components. Look under the hood. And see what's going on. Something like the XLP down 0.7% today, probably probably not going to be down one one and a half percent unless you know you see everything and you see multiple rotation. But I don't think this is a sell everything market. And uh, we are just uh, 20 seconds away from imbalances now. Oh, this will be interesting. Let's yeah, go grab them. Yeah, uh, I'm sure there's going to be a few sell imbalances here. There'll be a few, but again, institutional money managers are probably going to yeah. be saying, I'm going to just hold those orders a little bit closer and not show them an hour before we open. Well, there's going to be some sell imbalances. Let's see what's up. Right. Okay, five, four, three, two, and one. 830 comes out. They're all sell imbalances. Surprise, surprise. Bob is with the biggest 316,000 shares to sell. Uh, the financials. Financials have been on a pretty good run. You are seeing the TLT pop here today a little bit, 62 cents, which is never good for the banks either. Obviously, it's a risk off day here. So banks are getting hit. Citigroup down 1.6%. It's got 67,000 to sell. Bank of America, 319,000 to sell. JP Moore, 110,000 to sell. So those are significant. Um, General Electric, 557,000 to sell. They're pretty significant. You are seeing the S&P sell off a little bit here too. So 
Um, they're big, but again, I think you're going to see right now. It looks like everything's got a sell on balance. I don't think it's going to end like that. Like Johnson Johnson, 32,000 to sell Procter Gamble, 40,000 to sell. Those are stocks that could actually not saying they're going to go green, but I don't think they're going to be down one and a half percent today. And uh, also, just for a general rule of thumb, uh, you know, if you're looking at the spoos trading near last week's low, look at some of your stocks and see where they're trading in relation to last week's low. Just a quick example here: Bank America went off the board at 30.71 on Friday. Uh, you had a pair of lows last week at 30.15 and 30.18, right? So they're potential level of support, not gapping down through last week's low. So take a look at that as a, as a potential swing area. And just uh, also, I mean, if your stock had earnings on it or something, maybe it's a little bit different, but uh, really, I mean, if, if the, all things considered, you just, you're getting a replay from Thursday and what would you have done on Friday? Of course, Friday, we had the jobs report as a, uh, you know, as a driver here, but uh, just, you know, look at, look at your stocks and per perspective the last week's ranges. I right. guess you just got to say to yourself and ask yourself this question. Do you think this is going to be a long battle and this is like the first strike and China's going to strike back and they're going to put harder tariffs and it's going to be a war here, like a serious war starting again. Then maybe, you know, some of these stocks like the trade war stocks, you definitely stay away from them. It's, it's but, worth remembering. Remember that they just had talks in April in, in, yeah. in Beijing that were apparently productive. And then a uh, Chinese delegation is coming to Washington this week. So it's not as if talks are like on hold. They're still going. And I think this is just part of the negotiation process. Yeah, it Nothing goes straight. It probably, it probably is. But uh, market is pricing this like this is major. And that's what that's what I'm challenging. I, I, we're really get in, in three minutes. We're gonna Christian from yeah. and, and obviously he's more a fundamental guy. He's gonna be able to talk a lot of this stuff with us as well. He was so on this was, last night. Yeah, he sent out an alert, and uh, yeah. I, you know, uh, but do you let's think get his perspective. Maybe this is gonna be a bigger issue. But I, I'm 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 not selling off everything in my portfolio. I'm looking at what can I buy on the tip because that's what's continued to work this year. And you know what? I, I play with what is working until it doesn't work anymore. Do you think uh, Do you think Trump uh, is a little bummed that uh, Warren was getting so much headlines? Uh, this week? <laughs> We're still on CNBC. He's been on CNBC for two hours. Yeah. He's been on CNBC for like four days. Yeah. But, uh, speaking of is that, what it is? Warren's getting too many headlines. I better have a tweet out there to you know take some of the thunder away from him. <laughs> That's a good theory. <laughs> speaking of Warren, though. Let's 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 discuss. Let's do a few uh, Warren stocks. We well, have a minute and a half. Yeah, I mean, you would expect him to, to come out and defend Kraft Heinz and Wells Fargo, which is exactly what he did. Kraft Heinz law title this morning. Um, I don't know what. I, I mean, of course he's going to defend it. Well, Warren is a Warren can take more pain. He didn't than say I sold. That would not be good if he said I sold it. Well, well, but Warren can take more pain than, than you and I can, can even imagine. So that's a pretty easy one. What's he worth now? Yeah, <laughs> yeah pretty easy when with a hundred billion dollars or whatever he's worth yeah what's warren buffett's net worth he can take it so um you can do it better than me 89 billion but, any, but anyway joel just just i mean look at the chart here of craft time and he's 80 years old i don't think he's going to spend 89 billion in the next no, five years no, no. <laughs> not, or whatever uh, not buying egg sausage mcmuffins or whatever uh that guy man he made for 89 billion dollars he drinks six cokes a day and eats all those sausage mcmuffins man he did something right I wish I could do that. Uh, 32. I mean, this is just, it finds area support. And then you're thinking, oh, I should buy it. Then you look up a couple of days later and it's higher. It's just like, all I could say is institutions have just been focusing on this thing from like 31 and a half to 32, 11. Here you are at 32, 13. So, I mean, it's just got, it's just a bit of big area support. Do I hear all someone right. in the background? Uh, you don't know, but I am dialing Christian from her. So let's take a quick break and we will grab him. He is the founder and CEO of Tribeca Trade Group. We'll be right back in a moment with Christian.
All right. And as promised, we are back with Christian Fromhertz, the founder and CEO of Tribeca Trade Group. Christian, how's it going this morning? Uh, very, very well. And it's funny, I, I told Joe that I told Joel when I was coming on that something exciting would be going on. I told you I would bring the fireworks to the wow. show. We got to get, you know, I need volatility in oh, my wait, life. So we need to get Christian on every day if he's going to bring this kind of volatility with him. You told Trump to tweet. That's why, that's how this started. Okay. He actually right. Now these are bad You can do it. Now, Christian, uh, I like the note that you sent out, you know, last night. And really what you said in your note is kind of like echoing, like, everything that we've said in the show so far that yeah th this is a short you know a short term what we perceive to be a short term situation but you have long term plans long term perspectives on the market so we've been rambling on about you know our approach and stocks and sectors and stuff well why don't you just start us out with like that initial feeling in your stomach when you saw the tweet and you're like okay we're going to be down 200 250 or 300 and then walk us through your process here of evaluation Sure. Yeah. And um, yeah, I think that, that you guys, you know, the points that you guys are making are, are all excellent. And I was you know, just adding some comments in the chat because I'm like, yeah, I mean, that's, you know, you guys are, are spot on uh, with, with my thinking as well. But yeah, you see the tweet and it's funny because I'm in the middle of writing, I write a weekend newsletter, uh, you know, every Saturday and Sunday, and I'm just kind of putting the final touches on it. <laughs> and, I, and, you know, I see on my phone, I see the, the tweet and so forth. So, you, you know, it's going to be, painful. And I'm like, well, do I go ahead and rewrite my note? I'm like, nah, you know, I, I'm just going to kind of stick with what I have. And I just added a quick, you know, footnote because I, I knew futures were going to be down. And, you know, the first thing that I look at, of course, is like, okay, well, where are the futures going to open up? And then, and then it's really China. And I think that's kind of what is interesting and why I kind of, I wrote in the chat that I think this, this is a little bit of the art of the deal. Uh, Trump wants to get a deal done. I mean, I don't think that he wants this to go on for a long time. I think he, he wants a big win. He wants, you know, a chocolate cake party with, you know, with, uh, with China, you know? And so I think he, he wants this either to happen sooner or later, or, you know, I think he's, he's playing games with, Hey, if you don't do this by, and you know, it's funny because he mentioned this last week that, Hey, we could possibly even get a deal by Friday. So I think he's he's pushing for that and, and he's using the art of the deal that he likes to say and, and saying, hey, well, if we don't get a deal by Friday, this is what's going to happen. So I think that's the story. I, I think what one of the things that I'm watching this week and then you know we'll, we could talk a little, a little bit about some of the names that I'm watching and, and we'll talk a little bit about um, you know what you guys were saying about all stocks get hit. But. I think one of the things to watch this week is is whether or not they're they're you know China is actually going to come here and and talk. Now, if they said last night because there was rumors, there were some headlines, which of course you you never know if it's fake news or not. But they're like, oh no, they're they're not coming, and I'm like, well, I don't know. Did I I don't know if that's been confirmed. So I think if they are coming this week and you know are talking, then you know possibly uh, that's something to kind of build off of. Just real quick, I was working on my note too, and I saw that tweet, and I had to pull the paper out of the typewriter and uh, grab some new, <laughs> grab some new paper and, and put it in there. But uh, so, what do you do? What do you do first here? Are you looking at the Chinese stocks? Are you looking at stock? I mean, like something like CVS or some of these consumer staples. I mean. I don't know how many CVSs there are in China or what their you know relation right. is. I mean, overall economy. What do you do? You, do you go to stocks that you were like thinking of buying last week that maybe you missed on? You know, you're a little bit too low ball of a bid, or you know, or do you know, do you have filters? I know Dennis does a lot of stuff off filters. I like kind of like to follow the same group of stocks. Where do where do you go to 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 help with your trading trading decisions today? Yeah, and I mean, it's, it's a great question. And one of the things that I look at is, you know, we kind of have this playbook. For, this isn't the first time that this yeah. has been going on, you know, for the last year. And, you know, I, I look at the Internet stocks that really don't have much exposure. So I, I never, when there, whenever there's a big headline on the tape and all stocks are getting pulled down, I never go right into like the heart of the, uh, you know, the, the, the eye of the storm. Uh, I will look at names that are just getting pulled down that really have nothing to do or 
not necessarily nothing to do, but we'll have less exposure. So internet stocks, software stocks, you know, software stocks were had a great year and, and that's been going on. That's a, that's a bigger story that's going on, but they were one of the first ones to rebound in, uh, you know, the beginning of January. So I think those companies have less, you know, so, so uh, going back to your question, sure. There's definitely a watch list of names where, you know, these are names that I've wanted to get into, but I think they got, you know, they, everything ran up on, on Friday and, and, you know, this market is, has been just sizzling lately. So, I mean, I think there's definitely some opportunities. I mean, look at even, uh, you know, so if you look at the different difference between Apple versus Amazon, like I would rather pick Amazon uh, on the dip today because if by chance something bad, you know, it does get worse and China says, hey, well, we're not even coming this week and we're going to put tariffs on iPhones. Like that's that's something that they could use in their negotiations. So I would probably, for me, stay away from Apple. But Amazon, I think on the other hand, is going to be a little bit more shielded. I mean, there's it's a ton of so stocks. So I kind of look at things like that. Ton of stocks like that this morning, and again, I mean, Amazon's down two percent here this morning. Here, everybody had to own it Friday because Warren right. Buffett bought, you know, and and I it wasn't even Warren Buffett that bought. It was one of the fellows that bought. But in any regard, here, it's a stock that you know has made a new 52 or not a new, at least a new high on the year, new high in 2019. Stock that everybody wanted to own Friday, and all of a sudden they. They sell it back off and it loses its entire gain that I had from the Warren Buffett rally. I mean, we're right back to where we were on Thursday. So like Warren Buffett never happened. I think it's an excellent, you know, that's an excellent one that could potentially bounce back here if this doesn't escalate into something serious. So I, I guess you got to ask yourself that question, too. I mean, do you think this is going to be something that is escalating to be something serious and we're going to get into a serious trade war and it's not going to be a deal had for a long time? Because maybe that's a different story then. Maybe this is, you know, the smart money is dumping here then. But you're of the opinion that you think this is just more negotiation tactics, though. I mean, I, so I think what helps me is to kind of put a little bit of a probability behind that, right? Yeah, so be, yeah, yeah. And, you know, I try to get as, as certain as you can about an, a very uncertain event, right? You know, you know, no one knows unless you're in, you know, on the telephone call with Trump and, and China. But, you know, so you try to put like a little bit of a delta or a probability behind what do you think is going to happen? Do you think he's just trying to get the deal done? Do you think, and then, you know, let's say if you think that it's, you know, a, a, a 60% chance that there will be still a deal, or maybe it's, maybe it's less than that, whatever your percentage is. And then you can kind of think about with that, per, with that percentage, what you want to think if, if you are going to be a buyer of stocks, what is your using that confidence, okay, well, how much do I really want to buy? Maybe it's just, I want to, I want to dip a toe in and say, okay, I'm going to buy a couple stocks that I've wanted to get into that I think have less exposure, even like a J and J. But I, I always go back to when something like this happens, whatever the headline is that I really don't go all in on the first dip, you know, I'll kind of look just to basically scale in um, and do that over the next couple of days. There's a good question here, too, though. Let's say, hypothetically, you know, we're in this, you know, we've been in a pretty good bull market. There's definitely some people who are all in right now, who have been all in, who, you know, are looking at the S&Ps bouncing back and saying, um, yeah, I want to be all in I, and I'm all in on Friday. Now you get this headline overnight. Is this like, you know, you're down one and a half percent. Is this like, OK, well, I was all in. I better come off margin, at least if I'm, you know, using margin. Or is this, you know, just an opportunity? I mean, there's, I guess it all depends on your perspective. I never like to be all in because I always like to have some some chips to be able to play if we do get a pullback here. But there's a lot of money managers that are probably, you know, fully invested here or close to being fully invested here. What do they do in this situation? Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, unfortunately, they're going to be caught a little bit. I mean, if you're if you're that overweight, you know, and, and I think that's the type of opportunities that we can, you know, try to try to take advantage of if they're, you know, going to be, a, there's always going to be a little bit of weak hands in, in the market. So, you know, if they're going to have to do a little bit of forced selling, uh, you know, that's why I kind of use that scale and approach because you just right. don't know what everybody else is going to have to do. Let's jump over just to individual stocks here. So you gave us a couple off the bat, Amazon. What other stocks are you looking at here? I'm just going to know you got a little bit of a shopping list going there. Talk about your shopping list here, Christian. 
Yeah, the, the shopping. So I, I mean, Salesforce is always on. It, it's one of my go-to stocks whenever there's a little bit of volatility. So you know, I think that's another name that just does not have a lot of exposure. So I, I always try to buy. Uh, I, I don't want to say always 100 percent of the time, but it's always one of my my go-to names. Um, you know, names that also just you know you listen to their earnings calls and they have a lot of enthusiasm and they're, they've got a lot of momentum behind them. So that's something when the whole market gets pulled down, you know, that's, that's the name that I look at. And then a couple of like, uh, Joel mentions CBS. I, I would, I'm more in the J and J camp. Mm-hmm. I think that the chart of J and J is starting to look good. You know, they've, they've gotten now past all that, uh, talc stuff that they were in the headlines for i think that's kind of forgotten now that's been perking up so i mean so that's the name that i look at um you know and then going back to what exactly what you said with amazon everybody wanted to own this on friday it was going nuts <laughs> and now you've got it coming in um, i think that'll be a good stock to watch so i try to definitely try to have a, a watch list but it doesn't have to be a watch list of 20 names just you know you want to be somewhat focused on days like this from a tactical standpoint here, and we have, uh, you know, different traders, option traders, futures traders, stock traders come on the show. And there's always the the controversy about selling puts or cash secured puts. Uh, you know, on days like this, if you were selling some put spreads, you know, some weeklies kind of high up, you're you're not looking too good. I don't think most people use that as an investment vehicle. Uh, is that so, is that one of your you know for your longer term accounts? Is uh you know selling puts or selling put, put spreads? Is that uh, one of the strategies that you employ? Or are you just like to own the stock and maybe dab a little cause if you really like it? Yeah, I, I used to do the I used to employ the the sell put spreads. Uh, strategy a little while ago and you know that is something to you know to consider if it happens you know you going back to like the probability of what i was saying about a, a trade deal happening versus not happening i i kind of shy away from that i mean i think that was if you go back to what happened in december and i'm not saying that that's going to repeat itself but the selling put spread i mean i did that in a couple names and i'll tell you from personal experience i got pretty banged up uh by trying to call you know basically the bottom and not managing it appropriately. So if you, if I were to do that, and I don't think that's going to be one of my strategies today, I would do it in smaller size too, because, you know, uh-huh. if we just start, if there's more headlines that come out, I just don't like doing that in a very um, headline frenzy type area. I would almost like wait to that, to the volatility comes in a little bit rather than, doing the opposite with volatility, trying to catch a falling knife when volatility is shooting up. Um, I don't want to employ that. So you might, you, you might do a spread as opposed just right to the outright put sale then, right? You might do it, sell a put yeah, spread I mean, where you're, where absolutely. you're protected. And, and unless you're like, unless you're really comfortable with owning a stock at a, at a particular level for long-term purposes, but I, I would not do that uh, as a short-term strategy right now. Uh, Christian, one more before I let you go. You mentioned Salesforce. What about a stock like HubSpot here? Getting getting hit this morning, but at all time highs nonetheless, and a very similar business. Yeah, I like that one too. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think. Does this one have earnings? This I think it has earnings this week. Doesn't it? Oh, you know what? I think you're right. Let me confirm that real quick. It's a big earnings week. Yeah. So so this otherwise I would. Uh, definitely agree with you, but I think this one has earnings this week. I would actually be looking at one like um, Coupa Software, okay, which is breaking out. So, I mean, a lot of these software software companies they kind of look it's the same picture, but Coupe and then Vive is another one which, again, it's a high flyer. But you know, you get it down, and I mean, these are two names that we've been seeing pretty consistent call buying in as well. I mean, Vive we just saw a September call buyer on Friday, so. You know, if you kind of, um, you know, sat on your hands on Friday and saw this, saw this decent order, September 160 calls go up for 680. You know, you could think, hey, well, maybe I can get into that trade at like four or 450 today. And you kind of feel a little bit, you know, good about that if, if you do like playing options and, and watching some of the option activity. 
picking your spots. Uh, just one quick announcement here uh, before we let Christian go. Um, if you haven't p- purchased your ticket to the uh, Benzinga Trading Summit, then you better get out there because uh, Christian is going to be joining us in the afternoon. We talked about having uh, a couple different live trading sessions, and uh, Christian is a trader that likes to approach the close and look for his setups on the close. So he'll be joining us um, in the afternoon, kind of keying on what he likes to focus on in the last hour, hour and a half. So along with our other uh, trading crew, uh, Christian in the New York City is going to be joining us. So I'm really looking forward to to meeting you in person. And perhaps we all could just put on some trades at one time and then see what happens and have the crowd go the opposite of us. But uh, anyways, Christian's going to be out there. He's going to be out there with us uh, sharing uh, some of his layout and some of his tactics. So I just wanted to uh, get that out there to you guys. And Christian, I I dialed you up on Friday and we chatted and I'm like, you know, and I'm like, I'll figure I'll get him on a Monday and just incredible that uh, you send your note out and you have a good feel for the market and good opinions. And that's what people need. That's what they need ideas and strategies. And that's what you provide. Thanks a lot. Thanks very much. And and very much looking forward to meeting you guys as well in June too. So thanks. Thanks for having me. All right. Have a good one, Christian. Thanks Christian. See you guys. All right, uh, 851 here. I assume, guys, we are... Whoops. We're sold off a little bit. We're sold off a little okay. bit. And just I'm just looking at this. Is, okay, we're at Thursday's low. We're at the weekly low. We're at 2901. Uh, a little more emphasis on that area because it's also mid-range on this crazy session. So you're going to you know, you're gonna have the shakeout in that area off the open. We did come down a little bit off the, uh, the, sell, the sell imbalances, so that uh, put some pressure on. Uh, pre-market low, uh, 83.50. I think that will be protected. I mean, you may get down there. You may take it out by a tick or two, but the, you know that's a good level. And then, you know what, the high, Dennis, what do you think? Maybe the high and the low of the day are already in, like we missed it, 29.17. Uh, you know, I, I'm not going to quote on the S&Ps because Correct. you're down 40, 40 handles. We've been up so much. We can go down more. So I'm not going to try okay. to call the S&Ps here. But I just want to say on the individual stocks here, I'm looking at my screen here right now. Here, I got a filter. Let's run a thousand stocks, run all the big ones. I'm going to go, what is actually trading higher? So I'm just running the filter here right now. Just change the parameters. I have one, two, three, four. So gold. <laughs> so some of your gold stocks are trading higher. Hey, gold stocks. Virtue down. Financial, V I R T, of course. <laughs> yeah, I that's that's oh, for. why don't we think of that? Dennis, that was the first stock you were looking at this morning, right? Virtue Financial <laughs> is bid up here this morning. Uh, APC is bid up because there's news. They got a better bid from OXY. Uh, Red Hat is up. R H T. There's only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So out of a thousand stocks in this filter, and this is all your big guns. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I'm looking at 15 stocks trading higher. I, I'm going to gather that there's not going to be 985 out of a thousand stocks that close red here today. There is some stuff out there right now that is trading red that probably significantly red that probably shouldn't be trading red. So this morning, and these are all story stocks that are trading higher. So Red Hat, because they've they announced that that deal um, got some, and, and you'd have the headline, the pro. I don't want to butcher it, but there's an, there's news that the deal is closer to being done. Right. So that's why RHT is up. Dominion is a utility. So we know some of the utility stocks might actually you know, catch a bit on a day like this, although XLU is still slightly in the red. APC, which is the third one on the list here, is trading up because um, it's got a better bid from OXY coming in, which I don't even understand. Yeah, why? Did OXY I, I, had a bid, <laughs> and now they've, they've increased the bid again. Are they just like bidding against themselves for fun over there? What is this headline on OXY? <laughs> and, and maybe we should talk OXY because I, Icon's in there too. Yeah. So you got Icon, Friday night comes out. Icon's taking a position in OXY. OXY pops up like a buck and a half on this news. It's back down here because, um, yeah, uh, yeah, Icon is in. But they increased their bid to Anadarko. I cannot understand because I thought they were already the high bet. <laughs> yeah, well, they increased it again here uh, this morning. It's $79 a share, and that comes out. It's $59 a share in cash plus uh, a, a ratio of uh, 0.2934 shares of stock. So, so just in case, Chevron, you were thinking about total. jumping our bet, we're going to increase it even more just to make sure you don't think about it over there. Yeah. I already saw bidding wars work like, okay, we go, you go, we go, you know, you go, we go, you go, we go. Well, they already had the high bid, and now they're going making it higher. So I don't understand that at all. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, it's benefiting. It's benefiting APC here this morning. So keep that in mind. 
Dean Foods is trading up. It's a dollar stock. It shouldn't even be in my filter anymore they're, to have dollar stock. Dean Foods up. is down to up. They have earned. Wow, have I earnings. didn't know that dwindled that far. What? Oh, it had earnings. That's why it's not... up three cents. Dean Foods. Bosch, wow. Bosch Health Companies had earnings. Yep. And it's trading up because oh. it's up. Wow. And Chevron is trading up. Because Chevron's laughing at OXY over here bidding against himself. In the in the whole bidding war for ABC, we're like, did we did I miss something? No, maybe I'm talking, you know, and I'm we talking. Missed did Chevron have the high bid? No, I, I thought it was I, I thought it was I, already OXY's bid. I also thought it was OXY had the high bid. This I don't is understand from, from a Tuesday. Somebody enlighten me. How do you like, have the high bid and then come up with a better bid? I'm not sure. Uh, Holy <laughs> God. Yeah, I don't know. But wait, what about I can't shake them up? I, I want to talk about one that not up this morning, but gave back its entire earnings move, and that was Shake Shack. Let's talk about that move on Friday. And Shake Shack. Ugly, ugly, ugly. Okay, and there were some people asking about Shake Shack here this morning. That's an awful candle. That is a complete, you know, reversal here. I want nothing to do with that stock, and I think the stock could have been down even without the market here today. So when you see reversals happen like that. That's a sign that it's not a good sign at all. I hate those candles because everybody who bought that breakout is all of a sudden caught to short term money's caught. Anybody who bought in the first 25 minutes, it never really bounced straight down. And then it starts to try to come back. And now there's people hoping to get their money back here. I don't like that candle at all. I don't like the stock right now. Not and, at all. And uh, someone, when someone asked about it here, I said, you know, <laughs> today or Friday's low uh, better hold. And we are actually trading right there at Friday's low 49.15. Uh, I could easily see uh, a breach of that 5811, then lower into the 57 handle. But yeah, uh, quite a reversal off that. Dennis, I know you never liked shakes. You always thought it was too expensive from the first place. So uh, I made it there twice. You took me there once, didn't you? Yeah. Yep. yep. I, and I was still complaining about the price, and it was one of the lunches you were paying me with my winnings. <laughs> It's fifteen dollars. Yeah, burger about and it. fries. I know. And it's you, a good burger. Good tasting burger. But it's fifteen bucks. Yeah, it's sold to you. I don't like yeah. I don't like that candle. I don't like that it's not holding yesterday's level. A so burger you, and fries was. I didn't even have a beer. It was if I had a beer, it'd been like thirty dollar meal. And you had to stop and get a coney dog on the way home in your <laughs> truck was, because oh, you were they still didn't hungry. Have fries. Yeah, I'm a big eater. How about pot stocks? Real quickly, we're getting some questions about that. I, I, on Friday, I dissed them. I'm going to continue to diss them. I think the pot stock uh, fr feeding frenzy that we've had here is cooling off significantly. The valuations are all crazy on this thing. I don't like any of the pot stocks. I sold half of my Aurora Cannabis tier two and locked up half of the gain. I might sell the rest of it eventually here too. Obviously, wish I would have because it's trading down here. But I mean, the Freya chart is absolutely terrible. They got their own problems going on, though, APHA. But they look at Chrono, C R O N, down significantly. Maybe that one's holding on. CGC has been running, but. Which is the I, one? I look at a couple of these, they look, do look okay still, but I, I don't know. I. I just feel like I look at these valuations and they're just crazy. Oh, the ACB is still holding on to the pelts. Holding on. Yeah, to the to the pelts investment. That's the whole time it's been holding up to that. That I thought was the best one. And that's the one I own. So I do own still, uh, I have a half size position in this now because I sold half of it on Friday. So I got a half size position here on ACB still. So if I had to own one, obviously this is one I'm going to own because I do own it. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe maybe they're not as – I'm torn. Okay, I'll just say I'm torn on, on the pot stocks. But I don't feel – I feel like the easy money has been made in the pot stocks. I can say that comfortably. I just look at the CGC here, and it is trading down a buck of 50. Spencer, just throw the monthly up on this one because, to me – that that's just a wall there. Uh, Fifty. I see fifty two seventy four. That was a high in April. Uh, the the pops in May couldn't get there. The pops so far the pops in May haven't been able to get there. I mean, so when I'm looking at the monthly there, and I see four out of five monthly highs within a buck buck and a half range, to me uh, that you know there's some sellers there, and if those sellers can't get their their price at uh, fifty two and change, they move down to fifty forty nine forty eight forty seven forty six. So for this one, uh, you know, just like a mound of resistance. And let's look at Kronos, C-R-O-N, fell off and just hanging near the lows. And then I mentioned uh, the ACB. It's been holding on to that pelts gap forever. Looks like maybe it's going to give away today. But uh, now JV Speck making a good point talking about competition. Um, he's talking, I can talk to competition locally because the Freya is only like 40 minutes from where I am. 
And I can tell you, there is actually local growers. There was one, a big grower there that, that does cukes and tomatoes. They just got licensed. So these licenses are starting to get handed out. Yeah. So competition, you know, where we started in, and obviously, you know, before it was full legalization in Canada, I think there was like 28 or 30 licenses. Now they're going to start popping out these things like candy, in my opinion. So like licenses for, you know, you're going to start seeing a lot of people get licenses. There's going to be competition coming for all these companies here, especially the Canadian ones. And that's where a lot of the money has been made. And that's why I think the easy money has been made here now, because now that's full legal in Canada. I think you're going to see competition coming and eating up these margins in a hurry. Uh, yeah, this is why you just buy the ETF and call it a day. Who's to say? No, well, no, that's not the why, because that is full of those ones that these are full of the 28 companies that have the licenses. If you get the private sector that comes in and gets another 500 or 1,000 licenses come out there, what's that do to those 28 holdings that are in the MJ? That hits you there too. Sorry, Spencer, but to have, rain on your parade you there. Have better, but I think it's I think it's the private. He's hitting the sell button right now. That is uh, okay, okay, okay. In, not the stocks that are trading public. All right. I think it's going to be all the small ones. This one other one that's just got a license in Leamington is a private grower that's not a publicly traded company, and they're a huge grower of cukes and tomatoes. That competition is coming straight for a free. Fine. So fine. I think you're going to see competition coming like crazy. For this industry and that's why i'm like my aurora cannabis and i think it's going to be and you look at these things two years from now i think they're all lower fine that's if, my if, if you if you want to say the i think the mj at 35 43 in my opinion i don't want any piece fine of it. if you want to say it's going to be the private market that's going, going to come in fine but if you're going to talk about this publicly uh, on, on the public markets don't just try to pick a winner you could pick well you yeah could if you want to you, you could pick microsoft you could pick compact you know, you could be wrong. Yeah. If you're just thinking it's all the public companies here come back, and you want to just Thank own, you, you know, the diversified the portfolio tennis. of the public ones, MJ is a good way to do it. Thank you. I, I think the competition is coming for all of them. Fine. Fair enough. What do you want? What, Joel? I just oh, want sorry. I, I just, I'm just, I'm really <laughs> glad. Spencer's getting mad at me. Yeah. Spencer's mad. He's I'm ready. Sorry, to, he's ready to click. Boom. Gone. No, uh, I just want to say that I'm really glad that uh, Trump tweeted and uh, shook up the markets and stuff because. I'm sure you guys didn't want to hear me talk about the Kentucky Derby for an hour. So, for an, I could have talked for a whole hour on it. Okay, but uh, we'll we'll save that for when we go back to like our 10, 12 point ranges and uh, things are not quiet. But I don't want to go into that. Right fair, now. fair enough. All right, uh, that'll do it for today's show. Thanks to our guest today, Christian Fromherz. Thanks to all of you in our chats. Uh, as we mentioned, the Benzinga Trading Summit coming up June twentieth in New York City. Going to be in Midtown. Uh, I believe if you go to BenzingaTradingSummit.com, enter the promo code PMP15, you'll get 15% off your ticket to the Benzinga Trading Summit. Again, BenzingaTradingSummit.com, promo code PMP15. Please remember all the information from our show, which for informational purposes only, not meant to be investing advice. And on that note, everyone, hope you had a great weekend. Hope you have the rest of your day. We'll see you on Tuesday. <laughs>